Hey guys, me Chris. Um, it's been a little while since I did a little tutorial, but today I'm actually going to be talking about using ASP.NET um, and using the membership and role provider services to actually work with a MySQL database as compared to a Microsoft SQL Server database. Um, and the reason why people may want to do that is that maybe they have their host application on a website that uh, doesn't actually have Microsoft SQL Server but it does have MySQL and um, this is kind of the reason why I actually took this route and took the time to actually learn and do this tutorial real quick because I've come across that myself and through a lot of uh, head banging against the keyboard and doing a lot of research online I was actually able to find out um, just exactly how to do it so um, and just so everybody knows, you know, these membership providers and role providers is actually a great way to alleviate a lot of the code that the developer would actually have to do. Um, obviously, that doesn't mean you don't have to do any uh, developer code to connect to a database. You know, if you actually want to go ahead and write your own, you're more than welcome to. But it will save a lot of man, uh, a lot of man hours to actually create those types of complicated uh, functions yourself and uh, what better way to piggyback that on uh, something that really handles everything for you so with that being said um, just to kind of show you a little bit what it does is that um, it basically handles the the creation of a user for a database for a particular application and handle it, it handles the validation of the user itself and you can actually assign it roles like if you want it just to be a user um, if most people logging in just want to have them just like a general user versus an admin you can actually assign them roles and then through a web.sitemap uh, file you can actually assign different pages in your application to certain roles so if you have a special admin page then in that web.sitemap you can actually assign it to only have uh, people of a role of admin to actually see that but um, that particular note of the web.sitemap is kind of beyond the purposes of this demonstration here but uh, just so you guys know one of the things you're actually going to have to do is update your or add a reference to your actual web uh, mysql.web dll over here and uh, you probably can't see it but uh, one of the few things you're going to need is to find out its public key token and its actual version because that's what's actually going to be needed to uh, reference your provider in your web.config file so if you actually kind of follow me real quick here uh, just Add it as a reference, and then along the properties, you're going to see where it's located. Um, so I, I have gone there on my Windows Explorer, and I copied and pasted it into this particular directory here, where I actually have uh, the strong name utility uh, available for me from the start. Microsoft Visual Studio 2012, Visual Studio Tools, and you see these over here. Um, when, by clicking this native tools command, it brings me to this uh, folder location here. And what we're going to do real quick is actually just find out. Uh, actually, I think I already have it typed above, but just so you guys see. Uh, there we go, strong name dash tp dll, enter. You don't have to worry about this portion for now, but you'll see right here, here's the public key token, and this is what you want to grab. And for the actual version of the DLL, don't confuse it with this. This is actually the version of the strong name utility. Uh, don't get confused by that. You can easily find the version name of the DLL just by simply right-clicking on the DLL, properties, go to details, and there you go. So all you got to do is just pretty much make note of those two and in your web.config file in the system.web um, brackets or within that you would basically just uh, reference the membership MySQL membership provider and here's where it's important because here's where you actually got to reference the version and you also got to reference the public key token both of those which uh, we just kind of grabbed right now from the DLL itself and then with this you can actually uh, just declare certain attributes to this database you can actually have it to ha uh, require to have a minimum password length of six characters you can actually have a regular expression for it to pass before actually accepting a password 
and so on. And uh, below here, here's a MySQL provide provide profile provider. Excuse me, guys. And uh, MySQL role provider. And here's this is where it's useful to actually uh, allocate uh, assign a user to a particular role. Uh, the general user or the admin as I was speaking to before and uh, just as with above you're gonna need to reference the version and the uh, public key token of the DLL um, all of these reference off the mysql.web.dll so uh, it's gonna be the same for all three and by doing so it alleviates a lot of the code you actually have to do uh, for creating a user and I'll show you that just right now um, if you actually look over here this is the submit button event. This is what the user actually enters or clicks on um, when the person enters in his username and password. Um, I had this before and I showed you this in a previous tutorial, Secure Access Database. This was me actually writing all of the entry code uh, for validating against uh, the actual database if the user existed. And you know, it doesn't seem too complex. And, you know, it's not a very complex program. This is something I'm just kind of working on my free time. And um, you know, it's not too rough to do this yourself but if you want to rely on work that's already done by Microsoft uh, this ASP.NET membership provider tool is actually very good so I mean that's pretty much all of the code that I had right here for doing it myself and you know what we saw there and probably like a uh, hundred to two hundred lines it is now handled by I have this other function here it is now handled by pretty much this so all of what you saw before is now pretty much taken care of by the membership provider and here's the actual validate user and by actually calling this and passing in the username and password it validates the person if they exist in the database uh, same thing for actually registering anybody into a website if you're a website that likes to have user accounts uh, it's, it's the same exact thing so when the website page there's a submit event and uh, Again, using the membership role providers, you'll see here, uh, this is all it does. Create user, I get the roles from the database, and I assign the user uh, the second uh, index, or the first, the index one of their roles array, which actually grabs that from the roles database, or I should say that grabs that from the uh, ASP.NET roles database that uh, the provider creates. And the second uh, index, or I should say first index, um, is the, just a general user. And if you see here, um, this three, four lines of code here replaces what my, my uh, initial work, which is having this validate user, calling a few functions, then checking against uh, a list that I predetermined as, whether, as to whether or not the, pre the password actually um, is validated and uh, you can see here um, here's some other code that I did beforehand that is now replaced by that uh, ASP.NET role provider and um, you know if you have a bigger website you know it's going to be a whole lot bigger than this in terms of like the actual code that you would have created yourself if you weren't using those ASP.NET providers but uh, you can see how it greatly simplifies it and uh, just to give you guys a quick demo, let me just compile this. Let me run it. All right, you guys remember this city's website here. Um, so yeah, here's uh, the page. Uh, this was done and shown on a previous uh, tutorial, but. Uh, here we go. Let's just go to the registration link. Uh, let's just say test user eight at gmail.com. Username is test user eight. I'm going to put the password as user eight eight and submit. Now, if I actually look into my uh, database and my SQL workbench, you'll see that a bunch of these my underscore ASP.NET. Um, tables over here. This is actually generated by the provider itself when I first ran it. But if we refresh this, oops, no, do not want to do that. That would be very bad. Let me just refresh this real quick. Go to membership. You're going to see a bunch of stuff over here, and you're going to see this test user eight. 
now if you go to users test user 8 has uh, ID 12 um, you'll see that user 12 has a role ID of 2 and if you go to the MySPA my ASP.net roles table you'll see that ID 2 corresponds to the roles gen user so this is something that uh, again you can play around with yourself and um, see that it actually alleviates a lot of the code that you have to do so now let's go back over here to the main page um, so let's just test out what we just did test user 8 user 88 submit you're in why because the ASP.NET uh, application and providers actually do that for you if you want to do test user 8 and put the uh, user whatever else 89 incorrect is not going to let you log in and again this is all handled by uh, the providers for you so this one line of code here pretty much does all of the validation you have to do and uh, it's it makes it very convenient for the program to actually utilize this to their advantage so um, and again with the registration uh, you can actually assign role providers to the particular user himself so um, let me see if I forget and this is the actual design page here's the actual coding page um, and I think that's pretty much it. It's pretty simple. I've done a lot of headbanging and researching myself because I found a bunch of pieces of uh, of the answers in different websites and I finally was able to kind of collect them together. So I can actually provide a link of those websites which are pretty much already referenced here in uh, the web config file and uh, just kind of put it down in the comment below or in the description below just so you can guys see all of the information that I gathered to provide this tutorial to actually have your ASP.NET application connect to a MySQL server database uh, to facilitate user creation and user validation for your particular website. So uh, that's it, guys. Hope it was entertaining, or I should say, I hope it was educational. Hope it was uh, informative. If you have any questions, please let me know. That's it.